focused on is leading this confident offense. No time to waste. Brock Travelstead puts total leather, and we're underway here in Charlottesville. Tavares Kelly with the return to the 25-yard line will be an opportunity for us then to get our first look at Brennan Armstrong, a quarterback taking over for Bryce Perkins, who was so prolific last year. And Armstrong, Eric, you said it when we were watching pregame warm-ups. This kid's just got a lot of swag. He absolutely does. He's the type of guy that is really going to make an impact in this game with his legs, with his feet. He's hard to tackle. And, guys, he competes his tail off every single play. Wayne Talapapa, the junior from Hawaii. Lone setback. Now on an interesting play. It's Billy Kemp coming from the wideout spot, taking the handoff. And he'll pick up maybe a yard before that Louisville defense is there to bring him down. Connor, when we were talking to this staff, they said, we'd love to put guys in strange positions, make the defense struggle to locate where they are. That's a great example on play one, having a wide receiver take a handoff, Billy Kemp. Armstrong back to pass, flushed out of the pocket, just tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, and it looks like he did, but it's going to bring up third and long on Virginia's initial possession. And a great job there by Louisville surrounding the quarterback. Again, he's a dangerous guy, but if you let him slip through your hands there, he can really hurt you. Great job by the defense corralling around him. Bunch of guys to the hat, hat on the ball. That's what you have to do against this type of quarterback. And that last play led by Dorian Etheridge, one of the team captains of this Louisville defense. Third down and long now for the Hoos. Armstrong has a clean pocket. Now steps up as he gets pressured. He's just going to have to throw it away and live to fight another day. And it's a three and out for that Louisville defense. Outstanding job by Ramon Perrier. A walk-on who's forced into action because of uh, all kinds of players injured and unavailable for Louisville on that defense. Chris, obviously, if you're Louisville, you're feeling really good defensively about getting this first three and out. But that was a great decision there by Brennan Armstrong. Throwing the ball away, live to fight another down. You don't want something bad to then get worse by a silly decision when you're under duress like that as a quarterback. Nash Griffin, the senior from Indianapolis. Low snap, he's able to pick it up from his own 11 and get off a decent kick. Rajay Burns making the catch at the 30, better than decent kick, given the situation. And now an opportunity to see Malik Cunningham, who has got a lot on his shoulders, as you mentioned at the top of the show, because he's missing some big time weapons. Cotter, he absolutely does. Again, this guy is so special. You see what he does there number-wise. Just a very efficient quarterback, a guy that can really extend plays with his legs, keep his eyes downfield. He loves to find those expo explosive plays in this offense. A lot of it's going to be on him today. No Javion Hawkins, no Hassan Hall, so Maurice Berkeley is going to be the starting tailback. Pump fake, and Cunningham's going for it all. Try to get it to Fitzpatrick. Just hung it up there a little too long. Defended on the play. By D'Angelo Davis. That, yeah. You see there, you, you have your most explosive guys out. Don't forget about Des Fitzpatrick. We're going to throw it up to him. He's a big, strong, fast wide receiver. Just a great play there by defense to break it up. Chuchu Atwell also unavailable for the Cardinals in this game. We're going to get to some of the players that they are without on defense, but two big playmakers offensively. Berkeley crashes into the line, bounces off the defender, and picks up five on second down. Great job there establishing the run. That's, this is what Louisville wants to do as a team. They're a run-first team, and everything else will be built around that. So it's good to see that you have confidence in your guy. Great movement on the first run there. Pick up a couple of yards. Looks like about five. And get him going. You, you've got to get going on offense, running the ball if you're Louisville. Berkeley, the redshirt senior from Naperville, Illinois. You mentioned he was a former walk-on. Got a scholarship last spring. Thrust into action today with the top two tailbacks unavailable in this game. Virginia brings five. Cunningham out in the flat. Dangerous pass, but gets a complete. That's Braden Smith, who's filling in for Atwell in that slot spot. They love his speed. They think the world of him as far as the future goes. Yeah, Chris, guys are going to have to step up. We just mentioned two huge pieces of this offense. So now the guys get an opportunity. What do you do with it? Fantastic concentration. Looking that ball in. Wasn't a great angle for him with the defender right in front of him. Gets the first down. 
Louisville hasn't been great on third down, but they pick up their first opportunity today. Berkeley spins away from the tackler, can't spin away from three or four more. That time for Virginia, he had Cohen King on the tackle. Here's Berkeley. Touchdown last week, only 80 yards on the season rushing for Berkeley in limited action. Cunningham to throw after the fake. Receiver wide open. Inside the 40. Out at about the 38 is Smith again. Chris, this is what you love to see. You run, you run, you get everybody's eyes focused on the line of scrimmage up front. And then you just hit them with a little fake. You got three people in the backfield. Of course, you see that heavy set. You're going to think it's a run. Guys start backing up. Easy pitch and catch there. Saw Nick Grant, the corner over there, lose his footing a bit. Had some rain in the area, actually quite a bit over the last few days, but it's gorgeous today. Last couple of days, I had a chance to dry that field up somewhat. Now Smith in motion. Give to Berkeley. Staying on his feet, churning for more yardage and spins for a couple more, firing up that Louisville pitch. That's what you want to see from a guy who has earned his way onto this team, earned a scholarship. And now that he's getting this opportunity, just watch as he keeps his legs mo moving. Does a great job staying patient, follow your fullback, and then just keep churning those legs. He would not be denied. What a great run there. Picks up an extra three yards just on individual effort alone. And Louisville using him as their workhorse, as they're going to have to today. Second down and five. Cunningham. Now flush has room to run if he wants. Trying to direct traffic, just going to throw it out of bounds. Zane Zandino was there play. with the pressure. Yeah, Chris, I love to see these quarterbacks throw the ball away. Time and time again, we see guys trying to extend the plays. Very smart. I want to welcome those who are watching North Carolina and Wake Forest on the ACC Network. I'm Chris Cotter. Eric McLean is with me today. Alex Chapel down on the field. First offensive possession of the game for Louisville after holding Virginia to a three and out to begin this game. So a good sign for that Cardinal defense. Cardinals without tailback J.B. Hawkins, without slot receiver Tutu Atwell in this game unavailable. So other players are having to step up, and we're seeing players do just that. That's true freshman Jordan Watkins, Eric, after... Braden Smith made a couple of plays on the outside. Chris, they love this freshman wide receiver, a guy who can really do it all for them. And like you just mentioned, those two explosive players being out for Louisville, guys are going to have to step up. You expect so much production from Hawkins, from Atwell. That's gone. Now these younger guys, some guys who, who haven't been in these starting uh, positions are now going to have to really step up there. New set of downs for the Cardinals. Maurice Berkeley. The fake to him and Cunningham's going to keep it. Thought about throwing it, and the fake threw off the defense, and it gets Cunningham some running, and he gets all the way down to the 13. What a special player here. You see the spin move, the pump fake. What a just a great job being aware of your offense, Chris, understanding that you have the option not only to hand it off, but then to pass it. And he does a great job of keeping that uh, cornerback there honest, keeping his eyes to his receiver and then picking up great extra yardage there Cunningham does. Cardinals mixing up the pace too. Now slowing it down a little bit after picking up yet another first down. Berkeley. Just try some muscle his way for a couple. This is the 10th play of this drive. Again, the initial drive of the game for the Cardinals. Great job by that Virginia defense. And you see Coach Satterfield here, a guy that wants to run the ball. He, he loves to establish that run. Coach of the year a year ago just really busted all kinds of expectations for Louisville. Getting to a bowl, you saw how much, Chris, that this team loves him. They celebrate him over and over again. And, you know, really just changing the culture here at Louisville. Yeah, 85 last year went to the Music City Bowl. We called this game last year in Louisville, and it was really the coming out party for the Cardinals when they beat Virginia. That it wasn't just a rebuild, they were already built. Now, 
Uh, Smith made a couple of plays on the outside. Chris, they love this freshman wide receiver, a guy who can really do it all for them. Have to step up. You expect so much production from Hawkins, from Atwell. That's gone. Now these younger guys, some guys who, who haven't been in these starting uh, positions are now going to have to really step up big. New set of downs for the Cardinals. Maurice Berkeley. The fake to him, and Cunningham's going to keep it. Thought about throwing it, and the fake threw off the defense, and it gets Cunningham some running room. He gets all the way down to the 13. What a special player here. You see the spin move, the pump fake. What a just a great job being aware of your offense, Chris, understanding that you have the option not only to hand it off, but then to pass it. And he does a great job of keeping that uh, cornerback there honest, keeping his eyes to his receiver, and then picking up great extra yardage there, Cunningham does. Cardinals mixing up the pace, too, now slowing it down a little bit after picking up yet another first down. Berkeley just tries to muscle his way for a couple. This is the 10th play of this drive. Again, the initial drive of the game for the Cardinals. Great job by that Virginia defense. And you see Coach Satterfield here, a guy that wants to run the ball. He, he loves to establish that run. Coach of the year a year ago just really busted all kinds of expectations for Louisville. Getting to a bowl, you saw how much, Chris, that this team loves him. They celebrate him over and over again. And, you know, really just changing the culture here at Louisville. Yeah, 8 and 5 last year went to the Music City Bowl. We called this game last year in Louisville, and it was really the coming out party for the Cardinals when they beat Virginia. That it wasn't just a rebuild, they were already built. Now on the option, Cunningham defended really nicely. Brought down on the edge that time by Devontae Cross from his cornerback spot, reading it beautifully. Yeah, and that, Chris, that is a smart play by a smart football player there in Devontae Cross. Watch as he does not allow either player to gain leverage. He stays there, makes the quarterback make a decision. Great tackle for loss. Cardinals have converted a couple of third downs on this drive. After that six-yard loss, it's third and 12. Virginia showing they may be in pressure. Zandir comes up. Now he backs out. They come. Bringing five up the middle. That pass is intercepted. To the 30 and a lot of room for Noah Taylor. He may go the distance. Gets a block on the outside and he'll score. 86 yards for the junior from Silver Spring, Maryland. Virginia on top. Chris, what an amazing play. We talked to Noah Taylor just yesterday. I said, what is one part of your game that you worked so hard in in the offseason to get better at? He said it was in coverage. I wanted to become a better cover player. Man, it's you're just speaking into existence right here. You get the huge interception, and then you see the ball skills to be able to run it back 86 yards to the house. Nash Griffin for the PAT. He splits the uprights just like that. Louisville, an impressive drive into the red zone, but Virginia and Noah Taylor turning it around and taking it back the other way. Cunningham gets blocked out of the play. Berkeley downfield. Taylor showing his wheel. Noah Taylor not even winded after running 85 yards with that interception return for the score. I'd be hitting that oxygen if I were him on the sideline, but he's happy enough. And Virginia with the early lead, stifling an impressive uh, drive, an opening drive for Louisville. Now we'll see what Cunningham and the Cardinals can do as they're going to go right back out there. Justin Dunkel kicking off for Virginia. And Jordan Watkins to return it after the hop for Louisville. He's not going to go very far at all. Stopped at about the 16. Let's look at that play again, Eric. What happened here? Yeah, you see Noah Taylor in the middle of the field up towards the line of scrimmage. Just the big, versatile defensive end there. He's going to show that he's coming. And it was a bluff. He gets right back into the middle of the field. 
Malik had no chance of seeing him. What an excellent play call. And then again, to have the skill set to do this. Look at him. He looks like a deer out there running, Chris. Full speed ahead. Yeah, Nobody's catching that guy. Those strides, you think about that linebacking core. He's 6'5, Snowden 6'7. Xanthir is 6'3, just long, rangy, fast linebackers right back out there on the field. Louisville now from their own 16. Fake to Mitchell. Cunningham looking to throw on the run. Has a receiver and can't connect with Fitz, Fitzpatrick. And so another thing that that defensive touchdown does for you, it instills confidence in your entire defense to say, hey, look, we've got a great scheme. We've got great players. We can do this type of thing and be an elite defense that we all thought that we could be. That's great to see that effort. And again, guys just making big plays. Noah Taylor, a special athlete. To see him do something like that is really just makes you an awe. Give to Mitchell. He's got room. 30. 40. Stays on his feet close to midfield. Inside the 40. Down to about the 34. So Jalen Mitchell now on this drive with a long run before Matt Gam is able to track him down. Louisville without J.B. and Hawkins, without Hassan Hall, and these other backups are really paying dividends. Confidence given to you, confidence taken away. You see the long stretch play here. This is what Louisville loves to do is that kind of outside stretch zone. They base their entire offense around that. So if they can hit that at five, six yards a clip, everything else in the playbook will open up and be surrounded around that. Dwayne led for the offensive coordinator called Mitchell his strongest back. He just needs to work on the finer points of the position, pass protection and whatnot. He was strong and quick on that play, but he got leveled there. Goodness gracious, Zane Zandir, ZZ, stop. ZZ, the alpha of this defense, talking to coach and, and defensive coordinator saying he is the guy. He's confrontational. He'll get in your face. I said, coach, that sounds like the perfect linebacker to me. All he cares about is football. Everything else, he quotes, it doesn't care. Doesn't care what people think about him. Doesn't care how he looks. Doesn't care what people say about him. Just cares about dropping ball carriers like that. Second down and eight for Louisville. Fake the push pass. Cunningham's in trouble. He's going to get dropped. Matt that Gam was, was there, job. among others, to bring him down. Great job bringing the pressure, staying patient, not allowing the quarterback to get outside. Jackson there, you see number six, his job was contained. He gets to the outside, doesn't allow Cunningham to do what he does best, to create, to get out in space, keep his eyes downfield. What a great play from a smart football player. Hearing this coaching staff saying he has made so much improvement from year one to year two, and it's shown up every Saturday. Second in the league in sacks per game, or uh, tackles per game, rather. That's his third sack of the year. And a third and very long, 17 for Louisville. Cunningham going to try and get a lot of it on his own. Makes a nice move, but getting just enough of him that time on the tackle was game. And he's a guy you cannot lose him in space. He's so shifty, so quick. And really does a great job, as I just mentioned, keeping his eyes downfield. I know he got vertical very quickly there, but he's the type of quarterback that he likes to escape, keep his eyes downfield to make the big time play. Wasn't able to do so in that one, getting, getting up and down so fast. Field goal unit coming on for the Cardinals. James Turner. This is from 48 yards. His career long is 40 coming into this attempt. Has the distance right through the middle. James Turner puts Louisville on the board. Seven to three. Got a good one to hear in Charlottesville. But there's offensive coordinator Dwayne Ledford. You'd fit right in in that powwow, wouldn't you, Eric? Oh, man, I'd love it. That's where I belong with the OC, <laughs> with the offensive line, former offensive lineman. You got to love it, man. You, you, I love seeing offensive coordinators yep. be former offensive linemen. We got two of them, Chris, in this game. The beard, the girth. It'd be perfect for you right there. This guy's just <laughs> mucking it up, hand in the dirt. Ledford has a, a, a definite rapport with those offensive linemen, being one himself and with this team. We didn't get a chance to see it coming on the air, but after warm-ups, he's headbutting his players. Loving it. One of the best in the country at what he does. 
Tavares Kelly will get an opportunity to return this from his own three. Runs headlong into a cardinal on special teams and is dropped right in his tracks. Fago on the stop. Good kick coverage from both of these teams early on in this game. Looking for a long field for these two offenses. Had some fireworks earlier today in the ACC, didn't we, Emac? Man, that's Miami, what, it's Virginia never Tech a game. boring <laughs> weekend. Never a boring North, weekend. North Carolina and Wake was unbelievable. This one promises to be that way, too. Talapapa. Was that Simpson? Yeah, that's the second back for Virginia. Shane Simpson. We'll see Talapapa, Simpson, and maybe even Ronnie Walker Jr., the transfer from Indiana, who was granted midseason eligibility. So this would be his first game as a member of the Cavs. Armstrong can run and just couldn't quite get his feet under him as he tried to make a cut. Monty Montgomery, number seven for Louisville, back after missing last week. So Cardinal fans, good to see him at that linebacker spot. No doubt about it. And again, you're seeing a third down conversion here, trying to get that third and six. You've got a dangerous quarterback that can pick it up with his legs, but you can't lose him if you're Louisville's defense. You have to track where he's going. Armstrong looking to change it up here. Louisville's defense now trying to get themselves in the right position. Complete. And that'll be a first down. Well, this is a great recognition by the quarterback here. Sees corner cat, throws it exactly where the corner comes from. Easy conversion for a first down here. Now the Wahoos will look to go quickly. Or they won't. They'll change the play. <laughs> At Armstrong's discretion. Louisville bringing just forward. Armstrong surveys it. Has a little bit of room to run. And picks up good yardage on first down. You think Virginia so coaches design. cringe? You think they cringe a little bit, though? Because he's, he's been beaten up all year long. You know, that's just who he is, man. He, he is a tank. He's a guy. You see the big brace there. He, he's a competitor. He wants to be out there. So I'm sure they are on the design draw right there. Simpson met in the hole, but bounces off the defender. He picks up close to a first down. Looks like he may have it. That's one thing that defensive coordinator Brian Brown said about this Louisville team. Tackle. And I don't, you could put 100 exclamation points on the end of that. They have to tackle better. You've got to wrap up, especially this team. Looked like Virginia got away with one. Uh, the, the tight end there in the backfield, Poljan, was leaning forward. Might have been a false start. They got away and got the first down. Direct snap to Simpson. That's an interesting play and a good game for Virginia. Hearing from the offensive coordinator, these guys have a very complex offense Virginia does they move guys around they have very strange plays you see here a direct snap if you're a center you just got to remember hey I got to move it a little bit to the left great blocking up front get the edge Shane Simpson does a beautiful job of getting up in the whole eight yard game now Simpson in motion to the top of your screen Armstrong looking that way going downfield has a receiver with a step and just overthrows Rashawn Henry Looks like there's a flag for pass interference. I saw a little bit of grabbing going on there. Our first flag of the day and our first opportunity to check in with Jeff Eason. Holding defense, number 13. 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Got Cottrell Clark on the hold. See two guys being physical, just grabs on. You can't pull them. Can't hang on to the jersey there. Easy call for the refs. Fresh set of downs for Virginia now. Scrimmaging from the Louisville 42. Fake to Talapapa. Armstrong to throw. Receiver coming out of his break. But a nice job defensively by Louisville. Clark making up for that holding call and knocking the ball away from Billy Kemp. Yeah, and these are situations you'd really like to see catching the pass right here, Chris. You, you see max protection. You've got a two wide receiver route. It was just a little late getting to the wide receiver. Defender able to make a really big play.
Armstrong changing the play again. Talapapa now in motion. Armstrong receiver open. Makes the catch. Ooh, just barely couldn't keep his feet. That's Lavelle Davis Jr., the true freshman. I should say the 6'7 true freshman out of Dorchester, South Carolina. Watch this again. You see the running back. It's a distraction. He's faking like it's a screen. Does a great job settling his feet. Get by that guy. When you're 6'7, you're always open. Got an injury for Virginia. We'll take a break. Update you on the other side. Cavaliers moving up 7-3. And Virginia Tech did it too. Notre Dame meets North Carolina. Followed by Virginia and Wake Forest. And Duke in Pitt rounding it out at 6. All games here on the ACC Network and also available on the ESPN app. Armstrong to the end zone. Poljan is open. He gets Falls hit out. right at the goal line. Football is out. Let's see what they rule. They may rule it incomplete. There's a flag on the play too, Chris. Might be something with targeting. Ooh. The way he dropped that, that flag. Goal. He came in and hit Pole Jan, who I thought was going to waltz into the end zone. Dislodged the football. So they're, they're going to be looking at a lot of things here. We're going to get word on the flag, and then we're going to see if that was indeed a catch and a fumble. A lot of things Ooh, for the eyes of the defense. Yeah, like, a lot of things for the defense. You had big Lavelle out there, spread out wide. Lavelle Davis, everybody's looking at him. What does he do? He does a clear out route, and you've got the tight end coming right behind him. It was a great job, great play call, getting all the eyes and intention off of your big tight end there. It's going to be interesting to see the call, Chris. Polish and the big tight end, transfer from Central Michigan. Actually began his career as a quarterback. Going on the field the is an incomplete pass. During the plan, there was a personal foul targeting wow. defense number 12. That play is under further review. Marlon Character guilty of the target. Let's take a look. So he's a defenseless player. That, that's the biggest thing here. Obvious contact to the head. Right. Now that it's looks close. to me like shoulder to chest. And right. Is he a defenseless player? If he's see, I, that to me looks like he caught the football and he made a football move. To yeah, me. pass catchers men are just so protected in this day and age of the game. Can I think this is a catch and a football move, though. Catch, football move to turn to the goal line, and then he gets hit. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. This is probably the best angle, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I don't know, man. I think he's got he's trying to gather himself. It, it looks to me just like momentum. It doesn't look like a a planned uh, kind of movement. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where the ball was going, that's where he was going. That's a tough play there. And obviously, just the, from the reaction from Poljan there, clearly he gets rocked. Oh, it's a tough call. You, you hate to see these things where it's so close. And now a player potentially being ejected from the game. Marlon Character is the player they're uh, reviewing the call against. Young man from Atlanta, Georgia. Those are two coaches on the left. He's a big play early on in this game. Still in the first quarter to have to be without one of your top players in the secondary the rest of the way. Poljan shaking up a little bit on that play. He's being looked at by this Virginia staff. So they're reviewing both the targeting call and whether it was a catch or not. So both in play. It'll Obviously, be the targeting call stands. Yeah, right. Right. Are, are they going to give him that football move? Are they going to say he made a conscious decision to make that upfield move. To, and to me, it just looked like, you know, it wasn't enough for me to be a football player. If it was a fumble, it was recovered by Jack Fago of the Louisville Cardinals. So it would be Cardinals ball at about the one-yard line. 
And again, so close, it, it's hard to say if, it, if he actually made contact with his head, if he brushed against it. It's going to be great to see what the referees come up with. Let's hear from Jeff Ezer. After further review, the receiver did catch the ball and fumbled it, recovered by Louisville. The ball be placed at the three-yard line. There is no foul for targeting. First down. Louisville. They reversed both calls. They reversed the targeting call, and they reversed the original incomplete pass and ruled this a catch and a fumble. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen them reverse that much on a play. To me, it looks like he gets hit in the head there. It looked like he, uh, you know, thrusted his body forward. But, hey, great on them to watching it again, making the correct call. You see the back judge coming right in and ruling it incomplete and then throwing the flag. Turnover belt from Marlon Character. Forces the fumble, gets to stay in the game. And Louisville creates the turnover to get the football right back. And to stymie a good Virginia drive. Let's see what Cunningham can do here as we get toward the very end of this first quarter. And Chris, congratulations for everybody that had big defensive plays being the early impact of this game. <laughs> unexpected, clearly unexpected, as we thought we'd see some offensive fireworks. But big plays on defense, cutting drives short. 7-3 our score after one. Virginia using a pick six to get on the board first. Louisville showing they can move the football at least early. But the Hoos have the lead at home by four. start the second quarter deep in their own territory Cunningham on the outside he'll get the first down and a lot more to the 30 cuts it back inside 40 50 in the Virginia territory Mac Lane I know you love a quarterback like that that could go out of bounds decides not to <laughs> they'll get those extra yards young man and it's great to see again a quarterback that has such an awareness of what the play call is it's a zone read really ride it out watch him really sell this does a great job reading Snowden and it just hits the corner. Nobody's home. And instead of, like you said, ducking out of bounds, they'll throw a stiff on. They'll get four or five more yards. 48 yards on the run. 127 yards rushing in this game for the Cardinals already. A couple of big runs, a big part of that. Quick pass to Braden Smith, trying to utilize that speed outside. Leapfrogs the defender, but really nowhere to go. Nice game there, but again, you see Noah Taylor not allowing leverage to get outside. That's what's so special about these big, giant outside linebackers when they're in the correct position. They can just leverage you. They're so long. They have great strength and speed to say, hey, look, you're not getting around this corner. to Berkeley receiver fell down and couldn't quite get up to make the catch that was Justin Marshall We've seen some seen some footing issues for both teams early on in this game yeah you see the wet grass there really is impacting guys when they're coming out of their routes great pass pro good timing just slipped a little bit there ruined the, the patience of the route Third down and a long eight for the Cardinals. Virginia feigned a little pressure with Nick Jackson. Let's see if they bring him. Just four. Jackson coming on a stunt. Cunningham pressured. Has to dump it off to Berkeley. He's not going to get anywhere. He dropped the football before Snowden could get there. It'll bring a fourth down. You saw the delayed blitz. Nick Jackson coming around the edge there. Was patient enough, but enough to get in the quarterback's face, make him feel pressure, has to check down. Great job on contact, knocking that ball out, fourth down and eight. So for the second drive in a row after a long run by the Cardinals, Virginia's defense steps up, this time forcing a punt with Logan Lupo. Back to boot it away for the Cardinals. Lupo trying to pin Virginia deep. Kent with the fair catch at the 16. Somebody stepped on his toe and walked that one off. 
Virginia How about takes Charles that over. Snowden, man? He is jacked up for that stop. Fourth down. On Notre Dame fan, Eric McLean. <laughs> <laughs> I think his friendship with Mark Hertzlick might, uh, you know, sway him the other way today. That's going to be a fun one to keep an eye on that one. To keep an eye on Wayne Talapapa here as he breaks through for his best run of the day up the middle. Picks up a first down for Virginia. How about the big sledgehammer? Just hand it to him inside zone here. He's running through arm tackles. No shot of bringing him down here. Just a great asset for Virginia. Offensive coordinator. Robert and I said, you yeah, he can certainly plow the field, and maybe they've used him too much this year as that workhorse, as we've seen already, Simpson getting into the action. We may see Ronnie Walker, the transfer from Indiana today as well. Armstrong, all kinds of time as he gets out of bounds right at that 40-yard marker. Fantastic protection there by the offensive line. Really just a great blanket around their quarterback. I'd like to see him tuck that ball away a little bit. That's, a, that's called a B.I.J. You're running with it loose. These guys, they just knock it out, man. That's a fumble. We've seen two big turnovers already today, one by each team. But it certainly played a role in this game. Armstrong to throw. This one's intercepted. That's character who forced the fumble earlier. Now he gets his second turnover. That belt is going to be sized for him over there on the sideline. <laughs> Go ahead and have a day. And again, if you thought that there would be big time defensive plays in this game, you're absolutely wrong. Great to see these guys be consistent. Go out here, make some plays. For thought, both teams turn the football over in this game. Yeah, you see Noah Taylor there disguising where he is. Gets the big pick six. And then just knocking the ball loose here for Louisville. Just a great job on the goal line, making a huge play. And then receiver falls down. Two turnovers for this young man. Right place, right time. Marlon Character with the two turnovers. Louisville only forced four turnovers all year coming into this game. They forced two here in the first half. Cunningham looking to make him pay to midfield and more. 40, 35, still on his feet to the 23-yard line. Nick Jackson had to track him down. Cunningham has almost 100 yards rushing here already in the first half. Yeah, this is a true rollout play where he's looking to throw the ball, and it kind of turns into a quarterback sweep. He just keeps going. Nobody in front of him, no pressure. I'm faster than you are. He takes off. Just a great job cutting up into the field, getting those extra yards, really running the ball well right now. 94 yards on six carries for Cunningham. Now to hand it off to the big tailback. That's Mitchell. He gets met at the line of scrimmage by Nick Jackson. Nick Jackson says, I'm tired of chasing the quarterback all over the field. Just hammer the running back right in the hole. And if you remember a week ago, two weeks ago now, when UVA went against UNC, they shut down the run. Louisville already having three, four explosive running plays, really able to hit home tonight in the run game. That's what they do. This is the type of offense that they are. Everything is built around their running attack, their running game. Start to see some stuff open up in the passing game, Connor. 162 yards on the ground already for the Cardinals. Three big plays getting in there. Mitchell trying to find a hole. And this time again, not a whole lot of room to run. Juwan Briggs on the stop. Alex Chapel has more outs. Well, Chris, before this last drive, Malik Cunningham sitting on the sideline with his offense, specifically his receivers, talking with them about their route running, trying to speak with them about how they can get things going, have each guy go around in the circle. They were vocalizing what they were seeing out there. But one of the things Cunningham told me he's been working on is becoming more of a vocal leader. He said for teams, they turn to their quarterbacks when they're facing adversity, and I've got to do a better job of being more vocal with my teammates. Now looking over to the sideline, Cardinals 2 of 5 on third down so far today. Fish is a blow, this one dead. First charge timeout. Time out. Louisville. You saw Scott Satterfield charging onto the field to make sure they got that timeout to talk things over. Big third down coming up. right here on the ACC Network. Jordan Cornett, E.J. Manuel, Mark Rick, and Eric McLean pulling triple duty today. Going to break down all the ACC's games. The huddle available on the ESPN app as well as on the ACC Network today. We've already had some wild ones earlier today. This one's been crazy. We only have 10 total points, but a ton of yards and a bunch of turnovers. 
Cunningham flushed out of the pocket on third down. Can he get the first down? He does inside the 10. Will he score? He does. What an unbelievable run by Malik Cunningham. Chris, you have got to be kidding me. Look at the balance on this run to have the composure, the poise to stay in that pocket as long as you can and then just flush out of it. And look at him as he eyes the touchdown. He says, look, I'm not falling down. I'm not going out of bounds. I've got reservations for six. He almost lulled the Cavalier defense asleep on that play like they thought he was just going to go out of bounds. 113 yards on the ground for Cunningham in a game when they had to have it. Minus JV and Hawkins. Minus Hassan Hall. PAT is good from Turner. Louisville takes their first lead of the day, 10-7. And he says, hey, you want points? I've got some points for you right here. Watch him again, keeping his eyes downfield, turns that corner, could have went out of bounds, but I said, I want more. Go straight into the end zone. You mentioned it, Cotter, having so many guys out, needing somebody to be that explosion, to be that explosive player. Cunningham saying, I got y'all. Take a ride on the back. I think he just got good blocking downfield. I think the Cavs were still trying to corral him. He just had his receivers downfield making good blocks. That certainly always helps when you have guys who are not afraid to put their hands on another guy and say, hey, look, I'm going to block for my man, especially Des Fitzpatrick. He does such a good job of being physical, downfield blocking, understanding that the guys that he has on this team can break one at any moment. We talked about how there is always a touchdown in play for Louisville at any point in the field. They're so explosive. They lead the country with plays of 60 yards or more. So these guys are used to it. They expect it. And we have seen some explosive plays today, even without two of the most explosive players on the team. 59 yards on just four plays on that drive for the Cardinals. Cunningham finishing it off with a 19-yard touchdown run. Travel stead to kick off. Tavares Kelly to receive it at his goal line. He's going to give it a shot. Dragged down inside the 20. Flags from all over the place, and that one was obvious. A lot of energy there. You got to be careful when you're flying down that field. Sometimes you just try to grab what you can, but you come up with a uh, handful of face masks right there. Easy call for the officials. Face mask. Kicking team. 15 yard penalty. Adam to the end of the run. First down. Check out 23 here. Any, anything inside any of the openings on the helmet is considered a face mask. Let's see if he got right inside the upper part of it. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe just on the outside. It just swung. It was, Kelly's head just swung back and it certainly looked like it was a face mask. Maybe a break for the Who's. As now they'll get the start from the 33. Armstrong, receiver wide open. Davis. That is a first down, 21 yards to freshman. Absolute dart here from Armstrong. And again, 6'7 wide receiver. You think he's open at any time, but this was just a great job being patient, getting in that spot where no defense is. Great pass and catch. Kemp now coming out of the backfield. Armstrong going up top to Davis. A lot of contact, no flag. Keetrell Clark leads his team in pass breakups. And his only 5'10 was right there with the 6'7 Lavelle Davis. And I like the no call there, Cotter. You, you see the guys both being physical, both pressing, pushing, pulling. It was a great job there just fighting against the much taller wide receiver in Lavelle Davis. Louisville coming with some pressure. Easy pitch and catch. Tavares Kelly with the grab. Again, you're going to see some plays are just distractions. This offense is so complex. We're trying to move guys around, get your eyes one way, and we're going another. You've got a big 6-7 wide receiver screaming down the middle of the seam. You're going to forget about that little curl route. Good pickup for seven yards there. Third and three for the Cavaliers. They give the Talapapa, bounces it outside. Tackled by a host of Cardinals, led by Asir Abdullah. 
Looks like he picked up enough for the first down, though. When the Wayne train touches the ball, it's either a first down or a touchdown. This guy yes. is an absolute sledgehammer, and it seems like in his career, all he does is pick up first downs, score touchdowns. And you see just slamming into that defense. He's not afraid. He is a big man and runs behind his pads. Yeah, as long as career runs 31 yards, but he has 16 touchdowns in 18 games as a tailback. He does find the end zone. Now getting a little bit of a breather. Shane Simpson on the carry. Abdullah again on the stop. Got some extracurricular activities going on there. Mike should have been a penalty. It looks like the refs didn't see it. We've got two guys getting in each other's faces. Offensive lineman just shoves a defender down. I'm not mad at it, though, as a former offensive lineman. He probably said something I didn't like it, so I'm going to let then him know it, So you're saying he deserved it? He probably <laughs> deserved it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that right. he did, but he might probably have. Probably did. <laughs> Very experienced offensive line, by the way. 145 <laughs> career starts for this Virginia offensive line. That's the most in the FBS coming into this game, so they know what they can get away with and what they can't. Ronnie Walker Jr. to the outside. Right on cue, you mentioned we might see this guy and talking with the offensive coordinator, Coach Anon there, just saying, we have four running backs healthy. We've had one for, it seems like, all year. I don't know what to do with all these guys. Well, now you see they're getting them reps. This is his first live action with Virginia here. The coaches are very excited about that young man. He transferred in from Indiana, waited to get his waiver, finally got it, and now he's playing. Armstrong trying to do it on his own and just picks up what he can after all his receivers recover. Good job extending the play, keeping your eyes downfield. That's what you love to see from quarterbacks, guys that can do that and, again, make those big explosive plays. Good job picking up what you can, not throwing the ball in jeopardy. This long time consuming drive here by the Cavs. Armstrong was able to pick up just one yard on that first down, second down and nine. Give to Simpson, spins away from the first tackler. 10. Down at about the eight yard line. Good run for Simpson. It'll be first and goal for Virginia. How about the moves there from Simpson? A spin at the line of scrimmage, a little bit of a juke move. Watch here as he sees the defender not tackling me. That's a great job when you can have a running back like that. Cotter, it makes your life as an offensive lineman so much easier knowing, hey, I can, you know, I can maybe miss on this play, and I know he's got my back. Both Virginia and Louisville making substitutions. Umpire holding up the snap. Now he backs away. Empty backfield for Armstrong. Has some room if he can get to the goal line. Takes a big hit but spins his way in. He stays on his feet. There's your swag for you, Mac Lane. Yeah, I love that, man. A big old just quarterback that runs like a tank. He's not afraid of contact. A guy that, again, he competes so hard. You see in there, you have the great distraction at the bottom of the screen. Guys are going to be paying attention to that. He's going to look everybody off, be very patient, say, you know what? Connor, I'm going to go get this myself. And then right into the contact, into the end zone. One of the best competitors on the team. They love that guy. Delaney with the try, splits the uprights. Yeah, you know, as an offensive lineman, you love it when your quarterback puts his head down, absorbs contact at the goal line, gets over the line. Eight yards for the score. Virginia retakes the lead. Geico makes Virginia nine plays 67 yards to about 411 off the clock. That's an eternity in this game 411 But a good long drive to keep the Virginia defense off the field and get the Wahoos back on top Jordan Watkins back to receive this dunkle kick We'll take it in the end zone and take it in. There's more football coming your way tonight on the ACC Network. A primetime game presented by Geico. Florida State heads into Carter Finley to take on NC State. 7.30. A lot of times we kick at 8 o'clock here on the uh, ACC Network tonight. 7.30. Also on the ESPN app. You and the huddle crew happy about that 7.30 kick, aren't you? Maybe get out yeah, about a half hour. You goes, man. When you get that fill, you go straight yeah. into it. Let's go. Maybe get that get off a little early tonight. Head to Max Speed Shop. Get yourself some 
<laughs> barbecue out there. That's right. And you look at this matchup, Chris. When Florida State goes to NC State, it's been a little bit of a house of horrors for those guys. They don't like making that trip. I'm thinking more of the same this evening. There's Berkeley. Good hard run on first down for Louisville. For those of you just joining one. us yeah, here in this game, I was going to tell everybody, Jamie and Hawkins and Tutu Atwell both unavailable today for Louisville. Hassan Hall was already unavailable from a couple of days ago, so some big weapons missing offensively for this Cardinal team, yet they've been able to move the football effectively. Quick pass out, defended nicely by Snowden. Let's see the, this list of Cardinal players that are out. Well, this is Hawkins and Atwell, two of the most explosive players, not only on this team, Eric, but in the entire country. Yeah, you see leads the ACC there. Hawkins does in rush yards, third in the country. And again, just the explosion from both of these guys, what they mean to their teams. That's a lot of points and a lot of yards that guys are having to step up around this entire offense and make plays. And so far, it's been Malik Cunningham. He's doing it all for everybody. Another third down. Cunningham's going to try to do it on his own. Has to beat a man and does. Puts his shoulder down and absorbs contact and picks up the first down. Yeah, he must have heard us talking about him, right? Right on cue here. You see Cunningham doing a great job being patient, hitting the hole when he sees it. With this guy, Chris, I don't know if I like him throwing that shoulder in there. He's a little bit injury prone in history. You see his career. Protect yourself, but I'm not mad at you. Go out there, be a competitor. I understand it's a little bit difficult in that situation in particular. Well, he saw that number seven on the front of Noah Taylor's jersey and said, weren't you the dude that picked six me in the first quarter? <laughs> a little payback. I'm going to hit you right in the chest. <laughs> Fake to Berkeley. Cunningham to pass. Has time. Over the middle has a receiver, too. Fitzpatrick makes the grab inside Virginia territory. You saw the slide protection there from the offensive line, keeping a tight end in, having the running back. Normally, that means a shot. It must not have been open, and you see a great job there by Fitzpatrick going down, making the catch. Great conversion for this team. Berkeley takes on the tackler. It's wrapped up by Jackson. Flag on the play. Got a Holding here on the right offense, tackle. number 56. 10-yard penalty. First down. Renato Brown, guilty of the hold. It's interesting talking to Coach Ledford. We saw him talking to the offensive line on the sideline, how having to deal with life without Makai Becton, who's now with the Jets. And he said Boone and Brown, these two tackles had to grow up quickly, but they have. Yeah, and, and again, when you are missing a guy like Makai Becton, who physically and literally is so big, so strong, and you're just missing that, it's hard for these guys to step up and grow up very quickly. Doing a good job up front, but man, you can tell they are missing big Makai Becton. First down and 20 now after the holding call. Cunningham sprints out to his left. Xanthier giving chase. And a good job by Zandir not giving the edge, forcing him out of bounds. Gains maybe three yards on the play. Connor, I have inside information from a Louisville legend, Eric Wood, who tells me Coach Satterfield does not teach sliding for his quarterbacks. He wants them mm -hmm. to finish every play. He said we want to be physical. We want to have guys who are not afraid. And that's what you see right here from this quarterback, seemingly every run. Cunningham was only able to pick up a yard on that last scramble. Second and 19, right from the 50. As a receiver, another grab. Justin Marshall with the catch. It'll bring up third down and still a pretty sizable chunk to go. Yeah, Justin Marshall, another big physical wide receiver. Redshirt junior guy, six foot three, 213. Between him and Fitzpatrick, you've got to feel it good throwing it up to either one of those guys. Third and nine now. The Cardinals want to keep this drive alive. Looks Brock like pressure Tickle. coming up the middle. Yeah, let's see it. Zandir Jackson. Inside of two minutes now in this first half. They do come up the middle with pressure. Cunningham is forced out of the pocket. Now running for his life. Snowden will get him. 
There he is. We talked about him in the opener early on. Charles Snowden is a physical freak. He's a guy that is going to take advantage of you if you try to run Start away from out. him. He's too big, too strong, Virginia. and just fast. He's so athletic. Seconds. Great job running down the elusive, the quick Malik Cunningham. The game Fantastic clock. play by the For Senior Bowl seconds. Charles Snowden. One, yes, Snowden four, headed to the six. Senior Bowl along with Cole Jan and Simpson, the running back. Snowden and Paul Jan announced earlier this week by Coach Bronco Mendenhall. How about Snowden, too? Kind of got off to a slow start this year, but last week, or two weeks ago, rather, their last game, four sacks against North Carolina here picking up another one today. Yeah, you know, again, there's so much expectation, and, and when you have a guy that is physically oh, as demanding as he is of attention, Snowden. he's a guy that you're going to see it early on. And again, we talked about it earlier, the senior bowl here. Just seeing how much these guys are celebrating, jumping up and down, how much they love this guy, and how much this means to him. I know it's important. What a great experience. And that was last Thursday with Bronco making the announcement. And there's Paul Jan. Transfer from Central Michigan. Had such a big impact on this team. 24 catches on the year. Virginia called a timeout there to save some time. So with 146, they're going to get the football back. Lupo with the kick. Kemp trying to make something happen, but can't make much happen. 13-yard line. That's where Virginia will take over. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, we'll send it back to the studio. You're not involved in this, are you, Mac Lane? I mean, they're giving you some bit of a break today, right? No, I'm taking a break. It's going to be EJ, <laughs> it's going to be Coach, and, of course, uh, the biggest Clemson fan you have ever met, Jordan Cornett. Such a huge Clemson fan. Wait till you see what Al did earlier today for North Carolina. That Wake North Carolina game was crazy, as was Miami-Virginia Tech. So they'll highlight to those, get you caught up on what's going on between Notre Dame and Boston College, and a recap of the first half of this one as well. Talapapa just mosses his way for about four. That's an interesting decision on first down with a minute and a half left to go in the half. Yeah, you think it might be setting something up. Get your eyes down, think that it's going to be a run, and then maybe something over the top here. Again, just the chess match that is between offensive and defensive coordinators. But you're right, a lot of time is just ticking. If you call the timeout, you wanted to go down and score. And Virginia in no hurry here with a minute left to go. Armstrong going to keep it. Slides at the 20. That clock's ticking. You would like to see a little bit more angst from these guys, a little bit more excitement to get to the ball. A yeah. lot of clock is getting chewed up right here. Now on third down, maybe you don't. Because if you don't pick up the first down here on third and three, you got to punt it back. Armstrong looking to throw. Now he's going to tuck it. Throws. That's going to be incomplete, and they will be forced to punt. Really just an interesting way to manage this clock where you're, you're looking at, you're thinking you're wanting time to go and score, and then just the way that you're moving around slowly and calling run plays. Very interesting decision there. Now you're giving the ball back with 30 seconds to a team that can score from anywhere, that has explosion play. I understand they're down two of their best guys, but they still have demonstrated, hey, we, we can still be just as explosive with the guys that we have out here. Nash Griffin, the senior from Indianapolis, needs a good one here. Low snap, he goes down and gets it. And the lefty does get a good kick, and it's gonna take a little bit of a bounce here, which will run some clock. 23 seconds now for Louisville. Cunningham's had himself a good first half. Yeah, he absolutely has. With his arm, with his legs, he's really been running wild. And again, just the patience and understanding of the offense to say, hey, I have an outlet here. I can fake it, pick up some extra yards. It's been very impressive to see him staying in that pocket as long as he can and then just taking off and being the special player that he is. That touchdown run right there just epitomizes who he is as a quarterback, as an athlete, and again, just his skill level in this offense. Just the one blemish, that pick six that he threw to Noah Taylor early on in the first quarter. Other than that, it has been an effective first half for Malik Cunningham.
Now what will Louisville decide to do here? Two timeouts on the board. Cunningham's going to see what he can get on first down, and it's going to be a pretty good pickup inside the 45-yard line. Just a little quarterback draw there, design run. And again, when you have a guy as explosive and hit his on time offense, out. why not test it out? Let's really see what can happen. You call a timeout here, seconds. maybe you take a shot. But Louisville has that ability, Chris, to score from anywhere. That run put the Cardinals over 200 yards rushing in the first half. And we a new talk career about high for Cunningham. Yeah, the explosion there, 130 yards, nearly 12 yards a clip. So it's not methodical. It's not one big run here. It's a lot of big runs in a row. He, he's doing a great job of taking what the defense gives him, staying patient, and really taking advantage of these guys with their heads turned around, looking downfield, not staying home. You've got to contain this guy. Noah Taylor shaking up a little bit on the play for Virginia. And he'll be all right with the timeout called. He should be able to stay in the game if he chooses so. And earlier in the week when we were talking with the defensive coordinators, they said we have to have a plan in place for number three. We cannot allow him to run wild. His athletic ability has outdueled that right now. You see career high running the football from Elite Cunningham in the first half today. Cardinals still have one time out on the board. 16 seconds left. Virginia brings pressure up the middle. Cunningham trying to run away from it. Cannot. Zandier was there and made a big stop. So now the cards will be forced to use their last time out with 10 seconds. Louisville. Yeah, and Virginia doing a great job there bringing the house. You're bringing your two inside linebackers. We mentioned it earlier. Zane Zandier has no regard for human life. He's a guy that's going to get back there and cause some pain. A great tackle in open space against a superior athlete in Mikhail Cunningham. And it, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Mac Lane. If, if you bring pressure up the middle like that and Cunningham escapes that pressure, he's, he's in for a big run. Absolutely, because you're betting on those guys delivering, making enough uh, confusion or chaos up front to where they can really limit that window. But if you miss a special player like Cunningham, he can get by you and then there's nobody home because everybody is in man-to-man. -man. Cunningham's jersey all dirty. Again, yeah, I know as an offensive lineman, you love that. Yeah, no, well, you would be concerned because you think he's getting hit a lot, right? You think he's getting sacked in the backfield, but this guy, he's running. He has a career high rushing yards, so you're happy about it. This is the exception to the rule. Normally, you want your quarterback uh, looking very clean, looking like he just got out there for the first time. But when you've got a guy running it like he is, you're not too upset about it. No timeouts. Clock will temporarily stop with a first down if the Cardinals can pick one up here. Again, pressure up the middle. Cunningham lets it fly and just overthrows his receiver out of bounds. Still four seconds left for one more play. Get an opportunity to see Cunningham's arm here is almost certain to see the Hail Mary with four seconds left. Well, they do have two backs in the backfield. Just going to hand it off to Berkeley and see what he can do. Antonio Clary there to bring him down in the secondary after a 14-yard pickup. That was Mitchell. Jalen Mitchell finishes the half. And another big chunk of yards on the ground for a Louisville team that has had a whole bunch of success running the football, but turnovers have limited their scoring total. 14-10, our halftime score. Virginia turning one of those turnovers into six points with a 14-10 lead as both of these teams look to build a little momentum here in the midseason after... Some disappointing starts to their seasons. Virginia coming off their best game of the year in their win against North Carolina a couple of weeks ago. And Louisville had a barn burner with Notre Dame and then beat Florida State before suffering a loss to Virginia Tech two weeks ago, the week before this game was postponed. 
Miles Chapel standing by with Coach Mendenhall. Thanks, Chris. Coach Malik Cunningham having his way a little bit. How do you limit him in the second half? Yeah, he's a really good athlete, and a lot of the plays that he's uh, getting, he's improvising, meaning they're designed run or designed throws, and then he's scrambling. Yeah, more more emphasis on him clearly as he's the one that's getting most of the yards on the other side of things for you You're looking at your offense two turnovers early But what are your thoughts on the way Armstrong and company were able to bounce back? All right, the last drive was much more of what we're hopeful for with consistency the turnovers have hurt us Thanks coach Chris Thank you Alex 14 10 our halftime score turnovers are hurt and help Virginia But they've got the lead at the break State Farm halftime report with JC and the crew. Plenty of fireworks in that first half, just more on the defensive side than maybe we thought we might see at the beginning of the game. But we got a good one, 14-10, our halftime score. Virginia on top of Louisville. Chris Cotter alongside Eric McLean. And the third member of our crew, Alex Chappell, down on the field with Coach Satterfield. Coach, your offense caught wind in the second quarter. What effect does Cunningham have on your offense when he's making things happen with his legs? Well, he's doing a good job, you know, taking it down and taking off running on some big plays. Obviously, we get him in space. We know he's a great athlete. Uh, he can run the football. Uh, we got to do a better job protecting, I think. You know, so some of those runs where he's scrambling out because of lack of protection. So we got to do a better job protecting up front. Um, and we got to take care of the football. You know, obviously, one of their touchdowns was a touchdown. So we got to come out here in the second half and take care of the football and continue to do some of the things we're doing. Looking at your defense, and you said continue to do some of the things they're doing. They they forced two big turnovers. What can you say about the job they've been doing? Yeah, you know, we, we got to win a turnover margin. I mean, there's no question about that. That's been big for us all year. If we lost it, we didn't win the game. So we got to continue to do that in the second half. Hopefully create some more turnovers, take care of the football. We, we have a great chance of winning. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank Chris. you. All right. All right, thank you, Alex. Coach, touchback to start the second half. Louisville will get the football. And Eric, you heard Coach talk about it. They really have not done a very good job at A, forcing turnovers this year, and B, certainly winning that turnover battle in games, and that's why they have so many L's on the year. Yeah, 17 turnovers through eight games, Chris. They have to protect the ball, and you look at how quickly that can adjust, you know, point margin or, or victory. These guys have lost three games by seven or less points. It just tells you how pressure the, precious the ball is in keeping extra opportunities to yourself. Well, and right now, up two to one in terms of that turnover battle, but their one turnover went for six the other way, and the margin is now four as we start the second half. Cunningham going to start the second half where he left off in the first. Will hold just a shoestring tackle, prevented him from maybe going the distance. Antonio Clary got that shoestring, but he has, you know, 127 yards in that first half running the football, and he almost had a huge game there. Yeah, if it's working, let's keep doing it. You got a lead blocker and a big running back out in front. And then you just see how special this quarterback is. You see the wheels here hitting the acceleration as soon as he gets to the hole. Great first down play, setting the tempo for this second half. Power run up the middle, picks up about maybe three yards on first down. That's Maurice Berkeley, former walk on, getting the start today. JV and Hawkins absence. Hassan Hall also out, had a death in the family earlier this week. Unavailable to play. You've seen Jalen Mitchell, redshirt freshman, get some carries. These two are big power backs. Berkeley now bounces it outside. Nowhere to go, slips and loses his footing. He maybe picks up a yard. It'll bring a third and six. Yeah, we've seen that a couple of times this evening here. Just guys trying to make a cut, trying to get upfield, losing their footing there. It's tough. This weather has really impacted this field and changes how you have to approach it. Again, you see that outside stretch zone that Louisville's doing there. Such a big piece of their offense. They've ran it a couple of times now, Chris. I would be interested to see some type of bootleg or play action off of it. Let's see if Virginia brings pressure. Look at Snow nearest to us and Noah Taylor on the other side, number seven. You see those linebackers lurking around, itching forward. They can't contain it. They're coming. They're coming hard. Cunningham crashes into that line. Jackson was there to bring him down. Shy in the first down. It'll be a fourth and two, just shy of midfield. Great job by Taylor and Jackson there, just getting to the quarterback, swarming him, just grab his legs, try to get him down. 
because again he showed time and time again if you let him have a little bit of opening he's going to get it and it looks like Louisville staying on the field they're going for this what do you think about this right around midfield early part of the second half you got to feel like they can't stop your quarterback run you know maybe you spread them out a little bit better there you had such a claustrophobic uh, formation there where everybody's in tight it's going to be interesting to see what they do here but I'm expecting quarterback run got Berkeley in the backfield fourth down and two they do go for it Berkeley with the carry gets stuffed he's not going to get there big stop on fourth down for Virginia the Wahoos take over inside of Louisville territory to start the second half. Yeah, Chris, I, I do not agree with that play call. I think you want to keep the ball in the best the player's line hands. He's talking with Coach down, Shadowfield there, maybe asking what you see. First down. Why didn't you pull it? Because, again, he's the most unstoppable guy on the field. And just when you take the ball out of his hands, this is what you get. A great job by Virginia's defense swarming that inside zone. And here comes around the edge unblocked. Such a great player. These guys are jacked up. They love defense. They love each other. It's fun to watch these guys get so fired up. First big play of the second half to Virginia. Simpson. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Falls for a yard. Best starting field position of the day for the Cavaliers. Yeah, and interesting enough, not seeing a shot taken right there. Usually when you see some type of turnover, which a fourth down stop, that's what that is, especially where they are field position. I would have expected a shot over the top. Now Armstrong will pass. Cardinals bring just three. Maybe he won't. Tries to run it himself. And he's met before he gets to the line to gain, so it'll bring up third down. Great pass pro there. There's nothing open downfield. Quarterback takes off, does a great job protecting the ball. Picking up what you can. Call it third down and three for Virginia. Make it more like five. So a good, a good chunk of yards here for Virginia needing to pick up. Kelly in motion. Louisville shows pressure. And they jump, so a free play for the Wahoos. And they wow, make the most of it. Terrell Janna. Terrell Janna, surefire guy with his hands. Really outstanding Outside. wide receiver. Defense, number seven. Penalty's a climb. Results of the play. First down. Great job going up and getting that ball. Thirty-three yards on the pitch and catch. First and ten at the eleven. Keep an eye on Davis in motion. Keep it on the ground to Simpson. And he's able to pick up a couple. Field monster got him again there, Chris. You see these yeah. guys just time and time again. Their footing. You get your uh, feet there outside of your shoulders. You're not going to be able to make cuts on this grass the way you think you can. Haven't really seen the jump ball to Lavelle Davis yet. This is the perfect part of the field for it, though, isn't it? It absolutely is. And when you have that big wide receiver, it's been interesting. You see him in the middle of the field here, not on the outside. Maybe it's a distraction. Get the safety's eyes on him. Now they're, I'm expecting kind of a switch route. Look for him to go outside here. Armstrong now dances the pocket. Has him wide open for the score. Well, that's Chris, the easiest the right jump ball Lavelle Davis will have all day. Right player, wrong play call. <laughs> Just a great job staying active, moving to the open spot by the defense. You're going to see here he sees a void, an open gap by the defense, and Lavelle Davis going to do a great job settling down, getting over to the top of the ball, almost like a big tight end, and just make sure his quarterback can see him. Injured player for Virginia. We'll check on his condition when we. Moments ago, Lavelle Davis with his fourth touchdown catch of the year and his Virginia career. Brian Delaney with the PA try here to make it an 11 point advantage. And he is good with it. How'd they score this touchdown? You see the quarterback. He's going to drop down. And, and when Armstrong's going to start running here. Look at the attention the wide receiver gets. He's locked down, but then your quarterback, how active he is, it's going to draw attention. Linebacker safeties come down. 
Lavelle Davis does a great job of just finding that open space, staying active. Again, a threat like a quarterback like this, you have to come. Great job by Armstrong, keeping his eyes downfield. Hard to miss six, seven in the middle yeah. of the field, wide open. You don't have to be that accurate here. You just throw it up there. He's, He's going to throw go it anywhere. It. He's going to grab yeah. it. <laughs> to pull, pull in a rebound. Right. And on the play, Dylan Rankinsmeyer, the starting left guard, was injured on the play, taken to the injury tent on the Virginia sideline. He started every single position on that offensive line for Virginia. So if they lose him, they lose a valuable member of that O-line. There's no doubt about it. And again, talking with Coach and I and just how much he likes to put people all over the field, it's no different with the offensive line. These guys are cross-trained. They have experience at multi multiple positions here. It's going to be interesting to see if big Bobby Haskins now moves up to left tackle. Ryan Nelson slides inside. Watkins lets this ball bounce out through the back of the end zone. Down to the field with Alex Chapman. Well, trainers helped Dylan Rakensmeyer off of the field. He wasn't able to walk off on his own. They took him into the training tent. It looks like, from what I can hear in, guys, they've been taking a look at his lower body, uh, and they did take off both of his knee braces. They see big old 79 going inside the tent. At least he was able to put some weight on, on his legs, so that was good. And one thing you saw, too, when he was being taken off the field, every single one of his teammates, offensive teammates, defensive teammates, all patting him on the helmet. Obviously, an upperclassman like that means a lot to this team. First down from the 25. Mitchell goes headfirst into that Virginia defense. Snowden in there along with Carter to make the stop. Pick up a and four now we need to first. see a little bit of urgency, a sense of urgency from this Louisville offense. Yes, we want to run. Yes, we're a running team. But to get back in this game, down 11 points, and, and again, shooting ourselves a little bit in the foot by going for that fourth down and, and putting our defense in adverse situations, I've got to see some explosion. Get back to your bread and butter and do what you did best in the first half. Only 53 yards passing on the day for Louisville to go with 246 on the ground, trying to get more on the ground here. Again, Mitchell, nothing doing. And if you look on that play, that's, again, I've said it a hundred times tonight, Chris, that's what they do, that outside zone. But if you look at the backside, no one is staying home with Malik Cunningham. I, I would very interested to see him pull that, to have some type of action on the backside, whether it's a bootleg, some type of pass built off of that, because Virginia is really honing in on that stretch zone right now. Third down and five. Virginia brings pressure on the outside, and they'll get to Cunningham. Protection broke down there. You had a corner cat coming off the edge. Big number 91 in there. Alonzo making his presence felt. If corner cat didn't get him, Alonzo said, I'll do it by myself, big man. That was crossed from that corner blitz flying over the top. Just with the doctor order for Virginia, another three and out. Their fourth sack of the day. They're starting to really rack up these sacks. Five last week, four today. Two weeks ago, I should say, their last game. And Virginia will get the football back. And that's just what you cannot have, Chris. You've got to have some momentum. You've got to have some rhythm. These three and outs, back to back, four and out to start. It hurts you back. End over end punt doesn't take a cardinal bounce as Lupo Five right there. <laughs> I do I have noticed that a lot of them are up. I don't know whether it's something about 2020, but a lot of people want to get into that Yuletide spirit early. That's right. <laughs> right now, Virginia wants to run a little clock and get on another long drive. Might be difficult for them as they're starting to lose some players due to injuries. Check out with Alex Chapman. What do you got, Alex? They are. Well, tight end Tony Puljan did not come out of the locker room here to start the second half. We saw in the for most of the first half, he was actually sitting on the trainer's table talking with trainers. Offensive coordinator Robert and I came over to check with him, but things did not look good for the tight end. Yeah, the transfer from Central Michigan. Going to go to the Senior Bowl coming up this January. And... It's a very integral part of this team. 24 catches coming in, four touchdowns. It's a shame for Virginia to lose him, not just for the rest of this game, but for any period of time. 
Yeah, that's a big loss. He's a big time tight end. Was really impressed just how this team embraced him so quickly. That just goes to show you his work ethic, his leadership. Coach said he's one of the best leaders we have on this team. He's not a guy that talks a lot, but he's a guy that leads by example and gets the work done. Critical third down here for Louisville defensively. Want to get that defense off the field and try and get back into this game. Will they stuff the running back? They do. Tal the Papa. Nowhere to go. And Dana Kennard. Boy, Louisville fans are happy to see 57 back out there on the field. It was Simpson that got the carry, but Kennard, who missed the game last time out because of contact uh, tracing and the COVID protocols, back and filling that hole. Yeah, great job there, just shedding a block, being patient, and holding on, getting rid of your guy at the last second there by Big 22. Does a great job of making the play, getting a huge stop. That's what we just talked about. Now, this is some momentum for Louisville. Can you build on it? Because time is ticking, and you're down 11. Cardinals third, three and out on the day. Griffin with the kick. Rajay Burns is going to call for a fair catch. Catches the bounce. Woof. Boy, you know, I just let that one go, but might have saved a couple of yards for his team. Cardinals with the ball when we come back. Who was the last Louisville Cardinal running back to run for 1,000 yards in consecutive seasons? We ask this question because it appeared as if JV and Hawkins was on his way to doing just that for Louisville, although we do not have Hawkins available for today. But the last Louisville running back to run for 1,000 yards in two straight years. I'm going to guess Bilal Powell, but I'm probably dead wrong on that. <laughs> I have no clue. Not <laughs> even taking a shot here. Cunningham back to pass. Complete to his receiver at around the 28-yard line. That's Fitzpatrick. Those two need to get going here in the second half. And this is a really difficult throw. You see across the field, a deep comeback, deep curl. Really great throw there by Malik Cunningham. Just to be able to have the arm strength. You see it here. Great route. A little bit underthrown. Not bad. Putting it only where he can catch it. Yeah. yeah. All over him. Fresh set of downs and out from behind, behind the shadow of their own goalpost. So a little bit of room to work. Berkeley shaking up a little bit. A couple of possessions ago. Back in for the Cardinals. Cunningham now flushed. Flushed out. Somehow finds area to run. Makes a great move to stay on his feet. And gets to the 40-yard line. Nick Jackson finally tracked him down. But what a move. That's, I didn't think he had anywhere to go on this play. And he's out there just like a PlayStation controller. You see he's hitting R2, L2. He's juking Oof. out the entire team. Just so quick. So elusive. Look at that. My man's shoes just fell off. And he's on his way to an extra five yards. Man, I think that was Matt Gann. His family's probably mad at me for mentioning it. <laughs> 14 yards on the carry. Matt, there was nothing anybody could have done on that run. Here's Berkeley. He has a lot of room, too. A huge hole and gets into Virginia territory. Great job there hitting that hole with a purpose. You see the backside of that stretch. And just look how good, good of a job this offensive line does. I told you guys the, the cutback can really hit you, and it just evolves open. He had two ways to go there. Flag on the play after Berkeley picks up a couple. Illegal substitution. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So first down and five after the illegal substitution mark off against Virginia. A player I'm very interested that has not been involved yet is Marshawn Ford, big tight end. They get him out in space. They use him a bunch of different ways. I think you got to get him going. And another flag. Now he may have movement. We might just be right back where we started. Ball start. Offense number 79. Five-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, you're right. Both are tight ends. You know, Marshawn Ford, one of the team captains here, and he and Pfeiffer. Combined for over 300 yards, seven touchdowns on the year receiving, and they've been not involved offensively at all today for Louisville. And that's what I'm expecting to see, something on the back side of these zone stretches. Just pull it one time, do a bootleg, 
you've got to think it's wide open, but maybe it's a tendency. Maybe it's something Virginia has seen and is ready for. Trick play here. Flea flicker. Cunningham going up top. Receivers cover, but he comes back for it. Will he get into the end zone? He's banged down at the one. You know, sometimes you just they just listen Marshawn to us I mean, on the, the call. <laughs> you say it on that end that it comes out on this end. <laughs> and you love to see it, but he's that good of a player. And what a great play call. Again, so much misdirection. Your eyes as a defense are all over the place. You see, you think it's that stretch, then it's a reverse. No, it's actually a pass. And you're not going to see the tight end does a great job on the wheel route. Not to be at back. Great coverage, but a better offensive play. Yeah, and they've been he came out of the backfield on that play. They've been using him as that fullback flanked right next to Cunningham for much of the game. That's where he's been. Cunningham now on the naked boot. Will he keep it? He will and score easily. Took a shot at the end. But he was able to make it into the end zone. D'Angelo Amos gave him a little bit of a how's your father just for good measure. And this is where Louisville is so dangerous. They're so good at scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Very efficient offense. Again, the misdirection. Get the defensive eyes to look somewhere else. He could have tossed it in there for an end zone, but why not make sure it's the most secure delivery? Walk it in yourself. Second touchdown of the day on the ground for Cunningham. Impressive drive for Louisville as they cut into this Virginia lead. Perfect snap, perfect hold. The PAT splits the upright to 21-17. Wahoo's on top. Keep Let's see another that look here. 88 yard drive. Here it is. Yeah, you see down there just making a great catch on the ball. Big tight end. Tries to sneak in for that touchdown. And then we're just going to do what we do best. Roll our quarterback out. Make him make a decision. Go in there walking in for a touchdown. Cunningham now has 157 yards himself on the ground. 113 through the air. Had that one pick six early in the game where Taylor took it to the house. Other than that, he's been efficient if unspectacular. Hasn't that really that pass to Ford? It's the only time I can remember him really going downfield. It certainly hasn't been very often. Yeah, when you see him airing it out like that, and again, it's all a setup. It's all a game. We, we talked about doing that outside stretch zone that Louisville loves to run, and it would just happen to be a double reverse pass uh, that was built off of it. Keep the defense's eyes locked in on the run. Great throw over the top. Travelstead to put the ball in play. Kelly from his own four. Brought down to the 25. Let's answer our Aflac trivia question. When was the last time Louisville had back-to-back? -back? Let's check out on the injury here first. That's Kelly on the return. The Virginia staff taking a look at Kelly. Junior out of Miami, Florida. Take it over. Don't hold, don't grab. Just get your hips in front. Take it over. You're down. You got to come off on the corner. Casey Lloyd with the big stick at the 25 brought him down. And hey, good job on the uh, Marie. You know, he didn't take the post that much. That's what happens when good news is he's moving all of his extremities. That's always the first thing you look for. Yeah, it's a scary thing when you see a guy get hit the way he does and go straight down. Looks like a little bit of contact up top, and maybe he just landed on that shoulder. You know, it's interesting when a guy doesn't move, that's when you get really scared. Right. They did have a little helmet to helmet contact there. But the, they're, they're looking at him for a little bit too long of a time, I think, for a little wind knocked out of him. Don't want to speculate. We'll take a quick break and be right back to Charlottesville after this. Virginia up 21-17. The official drink of Fansville. Virginia starting from their own 25. 
That pass at the feet of Mish, the tight end. Kelly was able to walk off under his own power, so that was a good sign during the break. Always great to see a player get back up and saying, Coach, put me back in. So you've got to think maybe just a little bit of a scare there, and I'm sure he'll be back in shortly after being evaluated further. Ronnie Walker now in the game at tailback for Virginia, the transfer from Indiana. Had a carry in the first half, so getting his first taste of college football this season. And his first action as a member of the Virginia Cavaliers. Pressure up the middle. Armstrong escapes it. Gets forced out of bounds. That's close. Yeah, it's going to be a 15. That's going to be a flag. flag there up top. Monty Montgomery. Play. And yeah. now Montgomery gets dropped on the Virginia sideline. Jeff Beezer, Jeff Beezer's <laughs> giving you a pathway. Do you see him clear a path? <laughs> the referee he must have been a pulling guard back in his day, Connor. Montgomery just a little bit too late on the push. After a play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness defense, number seven. 15 yard penalty out of the end of the run. First down. Oh, yeah, just hit too late. She got wiped out. It's going to be good footage, though, if she got the shot. You're right. If she kept rolling on that, that's it. Yeah. Award-winning footage. You got to think she did. She just, at Virginia, they do their jobs. Yeah, just a little bit too long holding on, and then the push at the end sparked the flag and added 15 yards to the end of that run. Montgomery missed the game two weeks ago. Back in action today. Simpson in the game, split wide left. Armstrong going that way. And Simpson showing his versatility on the catch, lining up as a receiver out wide. Yeah, they really like the different positions they can put him in, the different things they can do with kickoff, kick return. Uh, and then obviously you see they're making a great catch. Want to see him have a little bit of opportunity to do something with it afterwards. Gain of seven on first down, second down and three. Ball now at midfield. This is just what the doctor ordered for Virginia. Keep that defense on, on the sideline a little bit. Give them a little blow as we get close to the fourth quarter. There's Simpson again up the middle. Good pickup of about five, maybe six. Rajay Burns right there on the tackle. Give him six. Great job on the front side offensive line and tight in there. Hat for a hat. Moving your guys out of the way, allowing your running back and Simpson to pick up the necessary yardage. Converting for a first down. Old Walker and Talapapa now in the game for Virginia. Talapapa in motion. He'll be in the slot at the top of the screen. Now they bring Davis in motion. Give to Walker. Tries to work it to the outside, but not a lot of room. Yeah, and it was interesting enough, if you look on this play at the top of your screen where Talapapa motioned out to, he did kind of a button hook, uh, kind of a screen over there. I'm not sure if that was an RPO or just totally for distraction purposes, but something to look at move forward because there was nobody over there, and he was wide open. Florida State, NC State coming up after us. We'll get a little studio time with JC and the crew. Lots to update you on. A crazy day in football in the ACC. Yeah, I know JC is really good looking forward to that extra time. Yeah, we could have a good finish here. Armstrong gets drilled from behind. Rajay Burns was in there to make the stop. It looked like he may have had a lot of room to run. Burns closed yeah, it down. That's a pretty scary hit there. You look at popping the ball out, maybe a potential fumble. Great job of the quarterback hanging on to that ball. Armstrong is going to let this clock wind down in the third quarter. Both teams fight in the end zone there in the third quarter, but Virginia, they had the lead at the half. They continue to hold it as we head to the fourth here in Charlottesville. Watt was on top. You want to go home with the prize. You want to have to go the rest of the way today. And Mac Lane, I hope, just the rest of the way today without Dylan Rankinsmeyer, their junior starting left guard, now on crutches. Yeah, it's tough anytime you lose a guy up front, but Haskins kind of came in and, uh, you know, really has played well so far. Big left tackle, 6'7", 280, 290. Has played exceptionally well so far. 
Terrell Jan on the receiving end there. And Coach and I talked about it. You talked about it earlier in the broadcast how they like to cross train these offensive linemen to play a number of positions. So you, you think Nelson, Ryan Nelson probably moves back into left guard where he started earlier in the year. And then Bobby Haskins, if he's healthy, and he is playing today, number 70, you can see him right there on your screen, now assuming that left tackle spot. Yeah, and it looks like big 52 in there up front. So moving a couple of guys around and an important down. It's fourth and two here. You know, you think an inside run quarterback power. You got Wayne Talapapa, the sledgehammer in there. Now we get a whistle right before the snap. And a flag down. The Louisville sidelines were upset. They were not happy with whatever was going on over there. This concerning signals against the defense. Mm. Five yard penalty. Wow. First down. So confusing. For, according to the officials, trying to confuse the offense. Yeah, that's a tough thing when, when you're either, you know, trying to get the offensive line to move. You're either clapping, you're, you're saying hunt, you're, you're trying to get those guys up front to jump, especially on these fourth down in short situations. You cannot do that as a defense, at least and let the referees yeah. in. It's very disconcerting when you do that. First down for Virginia. Armstrong just dancing around back there. Watch out on the back side. And he gets to the sideline just to pick up what he can. Cotter, good patience, staying in the pocket. If he gained a yard, I'm happy with him. If he lost one, as an offensive lineman, I'm very mad. You see here the patience finding a hole, trying to find something, juking. And just here, you want to see him throw it away. It looks like he might have lost the yard. That counts as a sack. That moves us backwards. Just throw the ball, get it away. Three yards. So a big deal, Cotter. Now you're going second and 13 instead of second and 10. Just you got to know that you can throw it away then. Look at this little lineman. Look at that backfield. <laughs> Simpson. Yeah, we're going to put three, three, guys, uh, three guys in the backfield just to run a little inside zone there. Again, we talked like to Coach Anai. He, he's just going to try to confuse you. He's got a bunch of different looks, motions, formations. And he's going to try to get you to be uncomfortable, get you to look somewhere else, and they, they hit you up, up the middle for an inside zone. There, Louisville was ready for it. Now just Talapapa in the backfield. Third and nine. Louisville brings delayed blitz and a receiver up the middle. Caught by Davis. Yeah, and an now he may get right a 15-yard penalty against him. Yeah. Young guy, freshman. You can't make those mistakes. You're trying to go up and, and just separate yourself further for a big win. It's hard to do that, but he's a young guy. He'll learn. He'll bounce back. The coach is going to give him a, a little earful when he gets to the sideline. Tell him he can't do that. the play as a first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Against the offense, number 81. This is his first unfortunate penalty of the game. 15 yard penalty. First down. Great coverage there. Better catch. And then you got to just act like you've been there before. You can't stand over. You can't taunt. I get it. It's a great play. But now you've just hurt your team. Young man is probably. Hearing it from defenders too. You get freshman, true freshman, star on the block. So first down, but they moved 15 yards back from where they would have been. So a fresh set of downs for Virginia and Armstrong. That's Starling. Made the first defender missed and then he got a nice pickup on first down at six yards. Great job there by the true freshman. How about the first time, Chris, we've seen somebody try to do a move and, and really keep their feet. You know, you see there, again, how slippery this field is. A couple of wide receivers fell down on the routes there. Yeah. Great job sticking your foot, picking up some great yardage, gain of six. Yeah, it's Meek Starling's first catch. Look at the congratulations. That's his first catch as a member of the Virginia Cavaliers. <laughs> true They're freshman. jacked up for him. Yeah, they love it. That's fun to see. See the biceps of that strength coach right there, Connor? He looks like you walking around. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing an extra medium like me. That's for sure. <laughs> Second down and four for Armstrong. Flushed out again. 
He picks up the first down. Great run by Armstrong. Both of these quarterbacks, when the play breaks down, they're showing what they can do. Yeah, great job again. Staying patient, keeping your eyes downfield, and then just deciding, I'm going to run it. I'm going to pick this up. You see again the patience, letting everything open up. And he's going to make a great cutback here to pick up first down yardage. Results of the play is first down. Time Injured out. player on the field. The, dead, the shoulder of true freshman Desmond Tell. You see him, young man from Stockbridge, Georgia. Looked like he may have just uh, hyperextended that shoulder, making the tackle on the last play. The result was a first down, and Virginia can pick up a first down without scoring on the one yard line. Armstrong to the end zone. Just couldn't hit Mish. Had a guy wide open. He's going to want that one back. It was a great play action there. Get everybody's eyes down on the running back. Just missed his tight end right there. And maybe even the ball. No, it's right there. You just got to throw it a little bit more. Get it to your guy. That's an easy touchdown. Armstrong's going to want that one back for sure. Virginia two for two in the red zone today. Both touchdowns. Simpson in the backfield with Armstrong. And give to Simpson. Lowers his shoulder. Still fighting for extra yardage. The Cardinals push him back at the seven. It'll bring up third down and six. I see the quarterback getting up in there trying to get a little extra juice on the block. <laughs> trying to push his guy forward. Again, great job getting some yardage. Now you're facing third down. What are you going to do? You're going to throw it up to your big wide receiver, hit a tight end across the middle. Virginia has done such a great job of just showing so many different things with misdirection, motions. You see the backfield, how they're lining up here with, with dual guys, kind of spread out. You see Davis there in the slot. Big 6'7 receiver, 81. Now Jan is in motion. Armstrong looking that way. Now he may try and run it himself. He gets brought down at the four. Kennard again coming back from that defensive end spot to make the tackle. Yeah, great job just wrapping up the quarterback, not allowing him to get that first down. Chris, we talked about it a couple of different times. I've been very interested to see a big Lavelle Davis not outside. He's been in the slot so much today. I don't know if they're just trying to get a different matchup or just, again, that misdirection, doing kind of a switch route with them. You'd love to see him outside and just toss it up. Delaney from 22 to extend the Virginia lead. And he is true. 24-17 our lead. 10-01 left to go in this one from Charlottesville. Hey, man. I really appreciate 24-17 Virginia on top. Let's answer our Affleck trivia question today. And did you get a tweet on this? Did somebody think they had the answer? Somebody tweet you on this? Yeah, but they were wrong, man. This Are you is sure? so difficult. We need, uh -huh. we need like Tim Beret out here for uh, the <laughs> Louisville Tim Beret to give right. us the answer to this one. Calvin Prince. I thought it might have been Bilal Powell. Calvin, all the way back in 76-77, the last Louisville running back to run for a consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. How about that card, man? Did, uh, Calvin, I get all a right. card in Clemson. Come on. What the heck? I'm surprised that car doesn't have like a dairy emblem on it or something. The local, you know, local business producing Louisville cards back in 1978. <laughs> Love it. Hey, image and likeness is coming, my man. Those cards will be coming back. Oh, you're right. Louisville getting the football back here after a field goal from Virginia. Watkins from his goal line. As a seed, then got hammered at the 26. The reason why we asked that question as our Affleck trivia question is because J.B. and Hawkins was well on his way to picking up 1,000 yards this year in addition to the year he had last year with over 1,000 yards. Not available today, though. Neither is 2-2 uh, Atwell. So the Cardinals in this game on the road without their two most explosive offensive weapons, in addition to Malik Cunningham, and they've done well to stay in the game. Look at Hawkins and what he did last year in the 6.2 average already this year, but not playing today. Movement 
for the Cardinals. Offense, number 56, five-yard penalty, first down. So it'll make this drive that much more difficult. Louisville just keeps hurting themselves. Turnovers, penalties. You've got to get some momentum. You've got to get some rhythm. Penalties on the first play of a drive do not help that at all. First and 15, seven penalties for 64 yards on the day for Louisville. Berkeley just churning his way to about three. Jackson again on the tackle. Second in the ACC in tackles per game, and he's had a bunch today. Yeah, Jackson just all over the place. Again, such a smart football player, has seven tackles today. A guy that just, as soon as he sees it, Chris, he trusts his preparation, sprints to the ball. Just a really special player, and he's coachable. His coaches said, we don't have to coach him hard. He gets it when we say something to him. Cunningham's going to keep it. Has all kinds of space. Doesn't slide, but avoids taking the big hit from Amos, and that'll be enough for a first down. Yeah, you saw the wheels there just getting to the outside. The inside backers had no chance. He's either out of breath or a little bit rattled there at the end of that collision, but looks to be okay as he stays in. Remember, Amos hammered him on one of his touchdown runs right at the end, and he wanted it. He was out for blood again. Yeah, and how about this graphic up on the screen here? We, when we talk about close games and, and being able to win those, it starts with turnovers. You can't turn the ball over as much as Louisville has and expect to win these close games. It is very hard to win when you are down in the turnover margin. Marshawn Ford now in the backfield for the Cardinals. Third and one. Wasn't enough for the first. And they're passing on first down. Cunningham's going to pick it up with his legs. And a lot more near midfield. Still on his feet. Gets a block downfield. Still running the football. Ball loses it. Out. And Virginia may have it. Trying to gain the extra yardage. And he put the ball on the turf. And Nick Grant was there to scoop it up. And right on cue, we're talking about turnovers. We talk about the margin of victory. It's so thin when you're at this level and to just give the ball away. The field a fumble it is extremely by the hard to be able to beat down. these type of teams. Virginia. Twenty-seven yards on this run, Mac Lane, and then at the very end he gave it up. Yeah, and a breakdown in protection, but a great job getting extra yards, being explosive. And you're just trying to get a couple more, and a great job by number one there, just ripping that ball out. Nick Grant, phenomenal job there by the senior. You really expect those type of plays from these guys. Going on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. That play is under further review. Our replay official, Bruce Palmer, will take a look at it. We'll let you know what he finds after this. Nick Grant forcing the fumble, recovering the fumble, and getting it back to his offense. After a long run by Cunningham, it looked like Louisville was in business. Now Virginia is with the lead. 8.22 left to go in this game. And certainly a desire for that man right there, Bronco Mendenhall, to get a nice, long drive going. Take a look at the fumble. Yeah, you see the great job by the defense holding him up, letting one of your brothers come in there and just rip it away from you. Nick Grant with a great job taking that football away from Cunningham. Hard to be mad at that guy, though, doing everything for your offense. Talapapa. You know Virginia wants to ride him a little bit right now and work that clock. Ideally, yeah, this for them would be... A, it's been a slugfest up front. Both lines of scrimmage just doing a great job initiating contact. Guys making a bunch of contact in the backfield with the running backs. Inside zone, outside zone if you're Louisville. Both these teams want to run the ball first. Simpson now split out of the top of your screen. Empty backfield for the Wahoos. Armstrong taking his time. And misfiring. Trying to find Meek Starling. Florida State, NC State coming up next. All presented by Geico. A little bit of primetime action, huh? 7.30. Sometimes we have these games most of the time at 8 o'clock on the ACC Network. This week, we've shifted the 
schedule up a little bit, so 7.30 they'll kick. Probably get a little bit of studio time with Jordan Cornett and the crew before we send it out there. To Raleigh for that one between Florida State and NC State. Armstrong, a little bit of pressure now on the back end. Nice play to Kemp, and Kemp with the wheels. Still on his feet. Down to the 35. First time we've seen Kemp here in a little while, but a big play there to move the sticks. Yeah, that was a great job evading pressure, keeping your eyes on your wide receivers. And just watch again this misdirection. A little bit of a screen here. He sells it downfield, gets it to the shifty Kemp, and he does the rest, picking up a great gain after the catch. He's the ACC in receptions per game coming into this one. Had 45 on the year. Just his second catch of the night, but it's a big one moving the chains. Yeah, he's a guy this coaching staff said he works so hard and has earned every second of the playing time and catches that he gets. Armstrong still chucking it. Steps up, now he'll run. Gets a slide in, but picks up a first down. 12 yards on the carry. Yeah, and you see here, everybody's going to be covered up. They're, they're locking these guys, guys down, doing a great job down the field. Nowhere to go, but hey, the quarterback says, don't forget about me. If you're going to leave nobody at home, no spy, everybody in coverage, I can take off. Great job there, picking up great yards. It's been the story of this game for both quarterbacks. Armstead with, Armstrong rather with 51 yards on 14 carries, has a touchdown. Cunningham, 194 yards on 19 carries with a couple of scores. Both quarterbacks leading their teams in rushing. Kemp. Flag down as he picks up about 10 on that play. Let's check the flag. Yeah, by the reaction of the defense, maybe something on them. And interesting enough, Cotter, do you think that these there two no quarterbacks are important? Oh. It's amazing what Armstrong has been able to do this year. He's been a starting quarterback his whole life, going back to his freshman year of high school in upstate Ohio, Ohio northern part of Ohio in Shelby. Came to Virginia, originally committed to go play for P.J. Fleck at Minnesota. Came to Virginia and was an understudy with Bryce Perkins. But he plays, actually has a very similar game to Perkins. He makes things happen when they break down and tough as nails. Talapapa stays on his feet. He told you he smells that end zone. Oh, look at Big 55 just finishing. That's what you love to see when you get those linebacker safeties. Take them for a ride and just finish off the play. Fantastic job there by the center. Oh, that was awesome, Chris. We got to see it again. Watch 55 this whole play here. He's just going to say, hey, buddy, you're going from A to B against your will, and then I'm going to keep going and just absolutely finish it. I know nobody cares about offensive line play, but hey, <laughs> this guy right here, you're going to know about it when it happens. Olu, Olu, a teamy. Yeah, you like how I let you say that one there, right? I know. I was waiting for it. I got your back. No game for Shane Simpson. Well, this is obviously a really critical third down as the clock is winding inside of five minutes left to go for Louisville. Want to be able to hold him to a field goal max. A little bit of misconfusion here. The tight end's raising his hand. Not sure what's happening. Now Talapapa split left. Armstrong's going to keep it, and he's going to score. What a read. Unbelievable job reading the defensive end, pulling it, seeing all that space when you have three guys to the right. Of course, the defense is going to think some type of screen, something going to this way at the bottom of your screen if you see the replay. And he just says, no, sir, I'm going to read this to a T. Does a great job pulling it, great job being patient, and just shoots out like a cannon into this gap. Really good job there by Armstrong. C.J. Avery there just getting a little too nosy. Got to stay on his guy. I'm sure his read was the quarterback there. Delaney with the PAT, 31-17. Virginia stretches out their advantage. Great job taking advantage of the turnover there. Quarterback does an unbelievable job shooting out of the cannon in for the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia. Get a big bow box delivery. Backs. Malik Cunningham also very good on the other side, but Armstrong 
203 yards through the air, and he's added 60 yards and a couple of touchdowns on the ground, and he's really put this team on his back here in the second half. Yeah, it's been very impressive just to see how much he means to this team. It was interesting enough, we were talking about how he's more alike uh, with Bryce Perkins than not, just how similar the offense runs directly through him, through the quarterback. Quarterback run, trusting him with their arm. Watkins from the three. Can he make a big play happen? Gets brought down to the 23, and that's where the Cardinals will take over. The ACC Men's Soccer Championship begins Sunday here on the ACC Network. Quarterfinal action, all four games, starting at noon with Clemson and Virginia Tech. 2 o'clock Eastern, Notre Dame meets North Carolina, followed by Virginia and Wake Forest. Finally, 6 o'clock, Duke takes on Pitt. All four games not only on the ACC Network, but streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Thomas Jefferson, the statue, likes what he sees so far. Just around the corner at Scott Stadium. Big hit by the kicker, Dunkel, on that last return. 31-17, Cunningham now. Complete. Fitzpatrick fumbles the football. And Virginia falls on it. Another costly turn on the field, field for the Cardinals. Followed by a fumble recovered this by the tail of their season. First the down, Virginia. Just an unbelievable job by Virginia knocking that ball loose. And if you're Louisville, you've just got to be sick. All the turnovers that you've seen from your team. It's going to be interesting to see if they review this one. From that angle we just saw, looks like his knee might be down. I think he's, oh man, that's close. I think he's down. Going on the field, comes out. He's under further review. Bruce Palmer, our replay official, is taking a look. Yeah, it kind of looks like there's a, a hand underneath the knee. It's going to be very interesting to see what they call here. Maybe if we look back at it to, to just see, but that was close. Zane Zandier picked up the fumble. Antonio Clary, let's see, Zandier may have forced the fumble and Clary picked it up. That's right, Zandier's hand is in there. That's really close. The ground didn't cause it, Zandier was the one who punched it out, that's clear. But was Fitzpatrick's knee down? And then Clary, 14, was there to pick up the fumble. Oh, that ball's moving. I think they called it correctly on the field. And that matters, too, when you're talking about reviewing this, these. If there's not enough evidence, the, the call on the field is so important. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Yep. Louisville gives the ball right back to this Virginia offense with a 14-point lead and 4-14 left to go in this game. I'm sure Bronco Mendenhall and his staff wants to milk this clock. This Fitzpatrick, he can't believe it. He thought it would be overturned. That's just so tough for this Louisville team. Again, so many turnovers through their first eight games, and it's really been the difference in winning and losing. Ronnie Walker Jr. with a nice run. We mentioned it earlier, but this Virginia offensive staff just so excited to have healthy running backs. Guys in the backfield, it would seem like for a little while there, they were just down to one and having to put quarterbacks at running backs. Now that they have four guys that they really feel good about, they're just so excited to get them in their different formations, test them again with, with uh, Ronnie here. This is his first game since transferring to Indiana. You know, finally got that waiver, and now he's in, seeing live action. Seen Shane Simpson a lot today. Wayne Talapapa, obviously, and now Ronnie Walker Jr. Get a heavy dose of him, and uh, Louisville knows it's coming, so they drop him for a loss. Great job on the backside there by Yasir coming down, just screaming off the line of scrimmage. He's the read guy. Whenever the read makes the tackle, it's either a great player or a poor read there by the quarterback. And that just was a great job screaming down the line of scrimmage.
Brennan Armstrong and this Virginia offense content to just let that play clock run all the way down before snapping it. Third down and three. Now Talapapa back flanking Armstrong in the backfield. Kemp in motion. Give to Kemp. Fights his way close to that marker, but they're going to mark him shy, it looks like. And again, you see the misdirection, the formation, the motions. Coach does a great job of just trying to confuse people. Get your eyes looking somewhere else. And you have a wider Charge timeout. Running a counter trying to pick up a first down. There first. 30 seconds. Louisville burns this timeout as they're going to have to stop this clock and get the football back. And hope they can keep Virginia off the scoreboard here. You know, and it's interesting enough, the decision that we're going to make right here, Chris, do you trust your big offensive line? Do you trust the way your defense is playing? And why not go for this? Why not just try to finish the game with the ball in your hands? Say, hey, our guys are better than you. We trust in them. We're going to pick up this first down. You're up by, by multiple scores. You're not thinking that one touchdown gives it away. I say go for it. Why not? But I've also never been a head coach, and I've never had to make this decision. <laughs> it's a long kick. It'd be a 47-yard field goal if they opt to kick it. And Brian Delaney's career long is 49. Yeah, looks like they're going to go for it. Walker and Talapapa both in the game, flanking Armstrong. Talapapa met at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got there. Yeah, he got stuffed. That was a great job by the linebackers there, just honing in on Talapapa. Normally a guy, again, Chris, we talked about it multiple times. You think that he's in there to get first downs and touchdowns. Just a really good job shedding blockers. You see 10 there, Rajay Burns coming in to really seal the deal after those guys made initial contact. Yeah, Yasir Abdullah has made a couple of nice plays here recently as well on the stop. So Cardinals get the football back with 217 remaining, down two scores. Of course, we talked about these guys can score from anywhere, but it's been tough tonight. And it has been tough through the air, only 137 yards passing, and Cunningham is going to have to do it through the air here. Fitzpatrick with a stiff arm, though, gets to midfield and out of bounds inside Virginia territory. That's a great job there. You see the length of Fitzpatrick just hitting him with that stiff arm. Just the long arms here saying, man, get off of me. Love to see that from your big wide receiver and just slam him to the ground. That was a great stiff arm. Pick up some extra yards. Inside of two minutes. Out to Berkeley. Does a good job to get out of bounds and pick up what he can. And of course, you've missed these guys all game, right? When you talk about these explosive players, JV and Hawkins, Tutu Atwell, but right now, being down by this wide of a margin with this little time, that's when you really wish you had those guys out there who helped you lead the country in plays of 60 yards or more, just to have that extra explosion on the outside. Now on the option, Berkeley. Nowhere to go, brought down. Jackson, the Cardinals wanted to get a face mask, but didn't happen. Yeah, it was a high hit, but a good hit by Nick Jackson there. Again, you see how fast he triggers to the ball. A guy that absolutely trusts what he sees. He's almost like a coach out there. Again, just so much preparation, living in the film room. A guy that they really have watched and liked his progression. I'm not sure I've ever seen a jersey that dirty on a night when it isn't raining. <laughs> Jackson is filthy. <laughs> Cunningham just right into the teeth of that defense. And there's number six again, getting his jersey a little bit dirtier. Yeah, guess who with his 10th tackle of the game. Just great to see that guy again. Nick Jackson flying all around making plays that's what you want to see from these linebackers really a core of linebackers between Snowden Zandier Taylor and added Jackson and how he's played that would go up against anybody in the country fourth and two Cunningham going for it all down to Fitzpatrick a lot of contacts no flag Virginia will take over 
Yeah, and you see the pressure of Virginia getting here. They're bringing guys all night long. Big breaks up front, making his presence felt. And just a little bit outside, a little bit of contact on this route, but both guys are fighting, hand fighting. It's a good no call. It's a tough way to end the game if you're Louisville. D'Angelo Amos on the coverage. He's played well tonight. Transfer for JMU. Coach Satterfield always coaching. He knows it's been a tough year for the Cardinals, but you just got to keep fighting. Tomorrow's a new day. He and Coach Ledford, the offensive coordinator, discussing things. Talapapa. Nothing doing there. The Cardinals have two timeouts left. Second charge timeout. Louisville, 30 seconds. Florida State, NC State coming your way at 7.30. We'll send you to the studio when we wrap up here. A little bit more from Jordan and the crew on wild games we had earlier in the day. Miami, Virginia Tech. Also, Wake Forest and North Carolina. Boston College, Notre Dame going on right now. Turnover is a huge story in this game, as it has been all year for Louisville. Yeah, it's really hurt him, Chris. Again, gifting those freebies to Virginia. You see the touchdown here. Really great play by Noah Taylor to be able to come up with it. But just all night long, you cannot hurt yourself as an offense, especially when you need rhythm. You need that cohesion. And when you're just coughing the ball up like this, giving an offense extra opportunities, extra things on offense, it's tough to overcome. And that's why you see a Louisville team that is now going to be 0-3 in these close games, mostly because of turnovers. And they give it to the sure-handed Talapapa. Ball comes out. Ball came out right there. Yeah, they're going to say the whistle had blown. Going on the field, as forward progress is stopped. Louisville's charged with their third and final timeout. 30 seconds. This is where, as an offensive line, you want to say, Coach, we got you. We want to finish the game with the ball on our terms. Go and get this first down. Great contact. Again, Louisville shedding blocks, getting in the backfield, and just swarming to a party. Look at all those red hats around that ball. Of course, understanding where we are in the game, but good effort by those guys up front. And again, Virginia wanting to finish this out. Pick up this big conversion right here. Third and five. It's going to be interesting to see the play call, whether we're trying to trick you with formations, motions, or are we just running right at you? Next week, Virginia takes on Abilene Christian. Famous NFL or went to Abilene Christian. Do you know who it was? Running back for the Eagles. Who for? For the Eagles. Running back for the Eagles. Yeah, a oh, long man. time ago. Could, long time. Was I born? Was I even born when <laughs> no he played? No way were you ever born. No chance. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, wanted to do, I wanted to say it in the Pat Summerall voice, but I can't do it. Wilbert Montgomery. <laughs> there you Wilbert go. Montgomery. <laughs> Louisville, meanwhile, taking on Syracuse next Saturday night on ESPN, 7 o'clock kick. Bonnie Walker on the carry. It'll bring up fourth down, and Virginia will be able to work this clock down to just about 10 seconds left to go in the game if they so choose and at this point again you, you understand the situation where you are you know do you kick it do you go for it I'm an offensive guy I want to finish the ball uh, finish the game with the ball in our hands I'm going for it I'm going with a power something to pick this up but it'll be interesting to see if they just punt it away defense has played good enough forced turnovers Done a really great job. Looks like they're going to punt here. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. There's an option here for a 10 second runoff. Which coach Satterfield refuses. They will take the football just to see what they can do they can here. The 10 second runoff. Louisville almost 500 yards of total offense or eight yards per play and yet they were only able to put 17 points on the board
One second left on the clock as we take a look at what Virginia has coming up. Mentioned Abilene Christian, their non-conference opponent this year. Then at Florida State, Boston College, at Virginia Tech, that game that they were originally scheduled to open the season with. I shouldn't say originally. After a few tweaks, they were going to open with Virginia Tech, then they moved it to the 12th. And those guys are going to be jacked up for that game. How important the Commonwealth Cup for the, both of these teams and for Virginia finally breaking the streak a year ago. Yeah. How important that was for Bronco to be able to break the rock after that victory. You saw the emotion, how much it meant to him for his staff, his players to say, you know what, coach, you break it. You're the MVP. You deserve this. It was a very cool moment to see. And yeah, Virginia, having lost four games in a row now, will win two straight. As Fitzpatrick corrals this pass, and it's over. The Cavs get the win and improve to three and four on the year as the coaches meet at midfield. Brennan Armstrong, tough, another strong game. Yeah, and a yep. tough game to get. If you just look at the stat sheet, you see the yardage difference. You would think Louisville won this in a landslide, but just couldn't score, couldn't hold on to the ball with the turnovers. Really a vital piece of this game that ultimately led to the Virginia victory. You remember the, the pick six, a defensive touchdown. That obviously doesn't register stat-wise, offensively. Just a really good outing, finding a way to win for Virginia. Satterfield giving congratulations to Jackson who was once again dominant for that middle linebacker spot Noah Taylor he mentioned the pick six early in the year early in the game rather that got Virginia on the board and Brennan Armstrong whose numbers may not be what Malik Cunningham's were Malik Cunningham had 197 yards rushing and two touchdowns and 161 yards passing did have a fumble did have an interception and both were very costly in this game. Armstrong, meanwhile, 15-23, to 23, 203 yards through the year. Had the one pick, but also had a touchdown to go with it. And sort of under the radar, really, was what he was able to do with his legs. 60 yards on 15 carries in the two touchdowns, and really making a lot happen when plays broke down and keeping drives alive. That was the most important part to me. When, when you look at being able to extend plays, extend drives, keeping things alive, and then for Cunningham, probably expected this type of performance out of him for Louisville to have any chance. We mentioned it earlier, out his two favorite targets, his two favorite weapons in JVN Hawkins and Tutu Atwell. Tough to see that, but again, great performance by that young man. We will certainly keep our eye on this Louisville program and whether we can expect to see Hawkins and Atwell joining Cunningham next week against the Syracuse Orange in Louisville. Again, that game... Primetime game on ESPN set for 7 o'clock right now. Virginia, meanwhile, set to take on Abilene Christian at a conference next week. Close throughout, turnovers played a big role in the game for both teams early, but especially for Virginia in the second half. And Brennan Armstrong putting the team on his back and getting him to a win. 31-17, our final. Send it to the studio now, Jordan Cornett.